Hello there lovelies and welcome to my channel Bobo Bands So Vintage Life. I'm Lisa, I'm a vintage inspired seamstress and dressmaking teacher. Now in today's video I want to talk to you about how I went about and still go about creating my vintage inspired handmade wardrobe. I thought it might be interesting one to have a look at you know what I do, sharing some of my tips um, if you already dress vintage, you might pick some things up. Um, if you're thinking of moving into dressing and sewing a vintage inspired wardrobe, then hopefully that might help you. Or you might just appreciate all of these styles, but it's it's not necessarily for you. Um, so whichever it is to be, hopefully you will enjoy. I've had a lot of fun putting all my ideas together for this for you. So please stick around and I shall see you in a moment. Now before I look at the vintage inspired wardrobe and how we go about creating that, I thought it might be quite nice to share with you just some snippets of my week, things that have inspired me because it's part of the process of creating this vintage inspired wardrobe you know the, the daily life the things you watch read see experience or find so i thought i'd go through I, i've just written down here i've got some films i've watched places i visited um some vintage stuff and some makes so I, i'll go through them without further ado this is just meant to be a quick little run through so I think that this is probably about a week and a half ago. I watched the fabulous Why Didn't They Ask Evans? It's a remake of the classic 30s Agatha Christie. Um, Hugh Laurie directed it. It's just an absolute delight. Watched it a second time and I know I'll go back for a third time. So if you're a vintage knitter, and there's a lady, um, I will find the link for her because I can't remember her Instagram handle, but she's the most amazing uh vintage knitter does a lot of 40s um, knits i recently discovered her and she constructed the most amazing cardigan and i saw the same one she couldn't find a pattern for it so I made her own and i saw the pattern for it appear in one of the scenes in why didn't they ask evans the main character she changes every five minutes because they know that we want to admire all these amazing clothes so it's an absolute visual feast brilliant story really good acting so yeah i highly recommend that the other thing i watched uh, the other film was uh, death on the nile i think actually i prefer the peter eustonoff version i was really drawn into it at first because the blues music is just so atmospheric um and i just loved it i really miss going to swing dance classes and going to events um, and just hearing this moment you want to get up and dance you just really feel it in your heart and soul so the music and the atmosphere i thought was wonderful i can't think of any costumes that really stood out even though the clothes are beautiful but i, I thoroughly enjoyed watching it um I just like the Peter Houston off the bit more tongue in cheek and with Beth um, Davis in it, you know, it's, that's my favourite one. And then last weekend we watched Cruella. You can tell who subscribed to the Disney Channel just so they could watch all the films they wanted for a month. Um, we, we've watched Jungle Cruise and all sorts of things. That was a bit silly with my hands hiding my face because I have a really, really bad snake phobia. So why watch a jungle film? Um, anyway, so we watched Cruella and that was absolutely marvellous. I thought it was going to be a silly sort of more of a child's film, but it's just brilliant. I loved the 60s, moving the 70s and then the, the punk aesthetic and the soundtrack's brilliant. So again, I highly, highly recommend that. It's a brilliant film. Really enjoyed. Then we've had some little trips out before my youngest went back to university. <clears throat> Excuse me. We went to Wiverton Cafe and Wiverton Hall Gardens, which is um, just up on the North Norfolk coast. I live in Norfolk on the East Anglian coast of, um, uh, yeah, East Anglian coast of England. You know, I live in Norwich, which is the medieval city, um, the capital of Norfolk. Um, yes, yeah, so we went to Wiverton and you can find that on TV in a programme called Normal for Norfolk if you look it up um, and look around. So we had a lovely time there. It's very much about the artist's aesthetic as well. It brings together um, Emma Bridgewater, her husband Matthew Rice is related to the family. 
His mum, um, Pat, I can't remember her surname at the moment, was an amazing textile designer. Emma Bridgewater, um, pottery is everywhere. Annabel Gray, the artist, um, brings in a lot of her paintings and her colour design. So it's a very, very inspiring place. Um, similarly, along the lines of visiting Vowood, which is also in North Norfolk. That's a beautiful arts and crafts house. So, um, and they, they remind me of our Norfolk sort of version of Charleston Farmhouse, you know, part of the Bloomsbury group, which is also an absolute dear favourite of mine to go and visit. So that was really lovely. We had a walk one afternoon at Foxy Woods to see the bluebells and just being out in nature, the blue skies, the blossom, makes you feel very spring-like. We went to the seaside and had ice creams um, on one of our trips out um, and then we saw some lambs on the way back. So yeah, all feel good things. Got a bit of vintage shopping in. I found an amazing 1950s jumper. It's very tight on the neck because it's not knitted with a stretchy ribbed neck. So it's very, very tight, but it's got rows of um, the wool that's been stitched down with silver and there's some little jewels in. So that's really lovely. I've got on my victory jumper that I finished, which I have got to work on my sizing. Not great at fitting on jumpers. I've got narrow shoulders, so I need to work out how to make the shoulder seam. You can see it's hanging off a bit. I'm just rushing through these ideas, aren't I? Um, yeah, I've got some amazing knitting patterns, which I love for the artwork. And um, I found in a charity shop, some jersey, this modern fabric, which has got a very vintage vibe. There's enough here to make a blouse. That's got to be popped in the wash because it's still a little bit of a smell. And then from the marvellous Nikki, I told you about this in my last video, I was waiting for this fabric to come. So Missy Mops fabric, just this beautiful, they're not original vintage, they're dead stock fabrics, but they're very vintage inspired. This is going to become a 40 style blouse and oh, just absolutely love this. It's just delightful. And this beautiful black, which I didn't realize, maybe it says in the detail, I just didn't read it, but it's even more of a bonus. It's a stretch cotton sateen, so it can make something a bit more fitted, but absolutely beautiful. So I'm absolutely thrilled with those. Um, I've made various things. I made three cardigans and a stripe top. Finished off my wrap top, which I wore under my striped gable top. I'm working on this um, springtime dirty swing jacket. If I show you, it's not lined, so I've been Hong Kong seaming and everything. So that's got to be hemmed and just finished off. And on the subject of knitting, I'm trying to whiz through my week here. On the subject of knitting, I ordered wool about three weeks ago to make the Sinead Wrap cardigan, which I think, again, I told you about in the last video, and the Best Way um, jumper. And I phoned up because it hadn't arrived, and they said, the bank holidays and everything, don't worry, it will still come. And I phoned up yesterday and said, it's not here. So they sent me a new order out. But sadly, the pink that I ordered has now sold out. So I had to pick another one where actually... I think I'm glad they're all sold out because I prefer this because the depth of colour. So it's going to be a black long sleeve jumper that comes up to here with the floral leaf pink going in with the top all pink. So really glad I can get on with that and ordered this cream, this drops cream charisma to do um, Tara's Sinead wrap cardigan. So I can finally get on with those. Final thing from my week, started reading this marvellous book. It's Sarah Winman's Still Life. <clears throat> now, with books, I either just get caught up straight away or I just know I'm ploughing through. And when I did my English degree, there was a lot of books I just had to plough through because you had to read them. This, I just adore. The, the dialogue and everything is fabulous. It's set in 1944 in Italy. Um, and it focuses on Ulysses Temper, a young British soldier, and Evelyn Skinner, a 64-year-old art historian, who is very independent, living her own life, and she's salvaging paintings from the wreckage of war. And she's reliving memories of her youth when her heart was stolen by an Italian maid that she fell in love with. And it focuses on those two, but it starts off with... Um, Evelyn and I think Margaret, who used to be a lover of hers, but they're still friends. And I just love the repartee between them. You know, you can absolutely picture these two women who are very striking. 
So really enjoying that book. So that's the snippet of my week. We better get on with the uh, creating a wardrobe, had we not? When it comes to creating a vintage inspired wardrobe, um, and I use the word inspired because that's the aesthetic I prefer to go to, but you could be a purist. There's, there's so many choices here. There are no rules about what you're creating. And if there are rules, then that's really boring because this is meant to be fun. Wearing clothes are meant to give you joy and pleasure and express yourself, you know, and just live your fantasies and be happy. So sod rules, they're over there somewhere. We don't want now, those. For some people that want to dress vintage, they will go to vintage originals, either because they um, don't sew or they don't have a dressmaker or that's just what they prefer. I have always loved original vintage pieces um, and I do have a few that I mix into my wardrobe but I've struggled over the years being six foot to find anything that would fit me and it also becomes more and more expensive to find. Um, so the joy of being able to sew is you can look through the vintage magazines, the old vintage patterns, the reproduction as I've talked about before watching period dramas, and you can start to create in your own head the exact look you want to go up for, and then either find the pattern, um, you know, and just plan it all out. And you can make it in original vintage fabric if you're lucky enough to find the fabric that you want, or you can find a beautiful reproduction. Yeah, I, I feel it gives you far more scope, you know, being able to sew all of your own vintage um, inspired wardrobe. Now, dressing in vintage style is very much an active choice. It's about expressing your personality. I've never wanted to follow the mainstream. It's just the way I am. It's not because I'm being bloody minded or anything. It's just never interested me being like everybody else. Um, I haven't seen the appeal. And it can sometimes make you stand apart, but I think it's quite a celebratory thing. And there's a lot of us out there like that. Right from when I was choosing my own clothes, you know, as a young teenager, I was always drawn very much to the look from the 20s, you know, the Louise Brooks, Think the Bob, and I did have the graduated Bob for years. Um, so think of Louise Brooks from the 20s, right through to possibly the early 60s, Mia Farrow with her little short pixie cut. And as the years have gone on, and I think, you know, bodies change and whatever, because I was really quite flat chested before I had my girls. Um, and then suddenly they went, ooh. Um, and my shape fits more of the 50s look. But I think it's the 50s that I've felt the most drawn to throughout my whole life in wearing. But I've always wanted to mix it up, never to dress purely in vintage. And a lot of that comes down to money too. I can't afford all of the clothes and all the exact look. Plus, I don't want the pressure on me of having to maintain an absolute look. I want something that I can enjoy wearing with ease that fits my, my lifestyle very well. I want clothes that I put on that I forget I'm wearing once I'm wearing them because they fit me really well, they're comfortable, they make me happy, and then I'm not conscious of them for the rest of the day. That was a comment I made in my recent beginner sewing class about um, the process of sewing and learning to fit your own clothes and the power that can give you in terms of inner happiness. <clears throat> and the lady, uh, one of the ladies in my class, she started to well up. She's quite a young lady. Um, and I, I asked her if she was okay and she said that's because she got married a month ago and her wedding dress is the first thing that she's ever had that absolutely fitted her and she felt fabulous the whole day, not conscious of her clothes. So she knew what I meant. Well, I found that, you know, that's just so sad. So hopefully through sewing, she's going to release that power. But it's about finding your personal style. So it's finding the era you like. And as I said, I, I'm more drawn to the 50s but I do dress in 40 star too. But it's all vintage inspired. I'll wear Converse. Um, I have got some vintage inspired shoes. I absolutely love Rocket Originals and Memory shoes, but I can't afford all of the ones that I'd like. So I only have a handful, you know, I'm talking two or three um, of each um, design, whereas I'd love to get loads of them. But if you don't have the money for that, then you make do with what you have.
and I look on eBay and all the other things that we do. So I'll I'll bring in all the accessories. My hairstyle isn't pure 50s style, even though the short hairstyles were a look of that period. But I I mean I absolutely love long hair and the chance to style it up so I could style it 40s, 50s, do whatever I want. But I've got ridiculously thick hair. Mm. Even though I've got short hair, the hairdresser has to book out an extra half an hour on my appointment just to get through it all. Um, she says I've possibly got the thickest hair she's ever come across so when it's long this is it just really shredded through to lose loads when it's long it's just like this huge carpet and it's really hard to tie up I have to wait till it's filthy dirty to be able to even tie it up so I had it in a bob because it's more manageable and then I just decided to cut it off a few years ago to make my life easier so whilst I would love longer hair to play around with this just works with my life so it's working out what works with your life my makeup is very 50s style, it has been for years with the red lips, which work in 40s, but I like cat flicks because I've got very tiny eyes, so I just want to accentuate my eyes more rather than do 40s makeup without the cat flicks. So it would work as a 40s style if I muted my lipstick down a bit and removed the cat flicks, but that's what I like, so I'll wear this with a 40s or 30s dress too. I like my fun kitschy jewellery, which it's probably more 60s kind of style. I absolutely love having my brooches. This is from 40s felt, which I designed made myself. So yeah, that very much goes. So, I, you know, it's about the accessories and whatever. So it's deciding what you want to um, oh, wear. While we're talking about shoes, I absolutely adore, I think they're the Duchess, is it Duchess of America? I can't remember the star now. But they're the Marilyn high heels that sort of curved out. I absolutely love them. They make your legs look so elegant. And I also love ankle strap, high heeled ankle strap um, vintage shoes. But I, at six foot, I'm not afraid to wear heels. I've worn, you know, four inch heels and whatever. I have, when I have my hair in a bob, often got mistaken as being in drag from behind, which is um, thanks, you know, obviously I made a convincing man dressed as a woman. Um, just because of my height but um but yeah I'm proud to wear high heels but I don't really need to in my day I don't need to reach that height and they're not comfortable so yeah I only have a handful of heels that really I wear when I'm going out somewhere dressy but not as part of my everyday even though they just look beautiful and spot on so yeah heels don't come into play either it's really about being your authentic self. And that phrase has really struck with me because my um, daughter, she went to her friend's funeral last week. So, you know, just a, a funeral of a 20 year old um, man is just dreadful, but sorry, bringing the mood down. I'm not trying to do that. It's just that he was the most fabulous boy. I, I met him when he was 17, I mean, when she did. And he always painted his nails. And did his eyeliner, mixed it up, did whatever he wanted, loved fashion and the, his parents put out and his sister for the funeral they said to all the friends we just want you to come dressed, be your authentic self and that's how we should live life, be your authentic self because then you'll be the happiest you. So hopefully what I'm going to go through and, and chat about with you um, for the rest of this video will be of some use. So with inspiration, this is where you need to start thinking um, about gathering ideas for what you want in your handmade vintage inspired wardrobe. So watching the films, the period dramas, looking on Pinterest, making a Pinterest mood board, looking through Etsy eBay for the vintage patterns. You might have some vintage books or magazines and there's so many out there you can buy. Uh, going to... Um, a vintage event you know whether it be a market or dance or something you know looking at how the people dress it will all help give you an idea of the things that you're drawn to you know what do you think you want to be wearing um and you know which air, era I was say era which era are you drawn to um you know and is it lots of eras and do you want to mix them all up there are purists that can be quite sniffy at some of the events that i go to um and they will only dress absolutely in that era. And yeah, and I know for a fact they're quite sniffy because I've heard some of their comments about the way other people dress. You know, if you want to go to an event just in a collective dress, um, 
and you know your hair is a matching the ear of the dress and whatever but you are really happy and having a good time go for it good for you I, I really don't like the sniffy just enjoy this is all about enjoying so they're my ideas for where you look for your inspiration now we have life and style and by that i mean your personal style and your lifestyle so you need to think about the way you live your life um, are you someone that cycles to work every day you know do you go to the gym before you go i'm, I'm in laughing because you know me i think i've been to a gym twice and i was more interested in going to the cafe in the gym than actually doing a workout um but you know do you have Times when you've got to do change, you've got to do activities. Are you a busy mum bending up and down and crouching? Have you got a sedentary job? Are you quite physical? Um, have you got a job where you can sort of dress up or do you wear a uniform? So is, you know, wearing vintage could be something that you'll do in your home time when you go out. Um, so considering your lifestyle will help you decide how these clothes are going to fit into your wardrobe. But also thinking of your personal style, what type of colours are you drawn to, shapes, you know, whether it's fitted clothes, more loose fitting clothes, you know, fitted, uh, fitted or loose fitting, God, um, you know, do you like patterns, you know, prints, florals, it's all of those type of things. So thinking about your tastes and your lifestyle and how they merge. So for example, for me, I mean, my car, got written off a few years ago. I've got this really lovely convertible Audi. I've had it six months before some lovely uninsured drug dealers managed to smash into it and totally write it off and they did a runner. Um, so on that, I wasn't in the car at the time, by the way, it was parked outside my house. So I was happily indoors unaware till the barber on the corner came and knocked to tell me it had happened. So I made without do without a car for about a year and a half and cycled everywhere, which was really good for my legs um, and my general fitness. But I had to think more of what I was wearing, you know, if it was cold, it's raining, whatever. So I probably made more trousers into my wardrobe then to fit that. Um, so, yeah, I started thinking more towards the 40s sportswear, thinking about how that would fit. Um, you know, with my lifestyle. The ways that lifestyles affected the way I dress. Um, when I used to teach um, teenagers that, um, oh, I'm trying to think of a polite way to say it really, but you know, they came from very deprived backgrounds. They've got a range of learning difficulties. I wouldn't have dressed up or flow because, um, you know, I, it was nice to have clothes on that they could talk about, but you wanted to be very much a part of their world, you know, so they could start to trust you. So I would dress down more in jeans um, and like jumpers to t-shirts, still vintage style, but more dressed down. So I wouldn't wear all the dresses that I do. Where now I teach dressmaking um, as my full-time job, I can wear whatever I want. I'm not constrained by, um, you know trying to fit in or make people feel comfortable because obviously with that other job i needed to make them feel comfortable and reassure them well now i want to inspire people with sewing and i'll be lifting up my dress say this is how you do this seam i'll unzip but this is the waist stay etc um so i'll have lots of fun um i can wear whatever i want um so yeah really have a good think about how you live your life and, and what will fit within your wardrobe and what pieces would you like now we come to looking at your wardrobe. Um, this could be, you know, the real wardrobe or just the wardrobe you have in your head that you'd like. Now, interestingly, the 1st of May, the Me May Challenge starts. So Me May May 22, which is hosted by Zoe of Sozo Blog. And she's got a fabulous podcast, The Curated Closet, I believe it is. So you can check that out. It will talk more about it. Um, and this challenge has been running for 13 years. I've done it this will be my seventh year of doing it and it's a personal challenge of looking at your me made wardrobe not having to make anything new you don't have to post if you don't want to but it's reflecting in ways that um, suit you so it could be you thinking I'd like more items in my me joint wardrobe because I don't have many I want to repair all the ones I've got um, where are the gaps so I thought it ties in nicely because I will be looking at my wardrobe, um, which clothes I wear a lot, that type of thing, and posting on Instagram daily, which I do every year. I find it a really enjoyable um, process sharing that and, and seeing what other people get up to. 
But looking through your wardrobe, you will start to get an idea of the colours you're drawn to, um, the type of colours that suit you, the, the shapes that you like wearing, um, which could lead you into thinking of the type of vintage um, styles that you'd like to wear. And if there are pieces in there, I mean, this is old advice, you will come across this so many other places, I'm absolutely sure. But you know, if you haven't worn it for years, then have a think why. Is it because it needs mending and you just couldn't be bothered? Is it because you don't like it? And probably that's why it mended it, because you're not that drawn to it, but you don't feel like you should part with it for sentimental reasons or whatever, or it costs you a lot of money. But if it doesn't fit, you can't be bothered to mend it, and it's just not you then pass it on to someone else whether it be charity or a friend or whatever or the fabric's lovely take it apart and use it to sew something else but you know be a bit more brutal with what you do and don't wear in your wardrobe you know finding the things that need mending which you'll love again or you can repurpose into something else um you would look in there and you think well actually i want to wear more blouses and i've only got two and it's also about the way our bodies change, isn't it? Um, you know, if you're conscious of your tummy, you might think, well, I want blouses that are a bit longer to cover that up. Um, I've got more separates and I don't like the way they cut my body half. I want more dresses, which are more flattering to me. So, you know, finding those gaps in your wardrobe will really, really help. And also take that wardrobe philosophy out to the shops. Now, I don't own any, well, I don't buy any ready-to-wear. I think I wear about 99% me made um, because that's because I've been sewing for a long time and I've nailed what I feel is my personal style. But I've got cardigans and bits and I have got three or four ready-to-wear dresses that I don't want to part with because they really are beautiful. I mean, one's from Ghost, so it's a really lovely 30 star evening gown. I've got a beautiful Noah Noah 1920s style dress. So I've got some pieces that are just too beautiful and I know I will wear them now and again. But I occasionally, and by occasionally it's probably about once a year, I will go around the shops to get an idea of the type of colours and things that are current. Most of the time I'm not very inspired, but I think it's a really good starting place if you're not sure about what you want in your wardrobe and your style, that you can try on different shapes and colours and see. So you try them on free and want to buy them, take them home. Just try them on, see what you like and give yourself um, you know, a bit of a feel for this. Now my next tip for creating a vintage inspired wardrobe are accessories. I absolutely love accessories and you can just do as many as you want or as less as you want. So I even count the red nails as my accessories. I didn't have my nails painted in my Thursday night class and one of my students in the Thursday class used to be on the Saturday morning group and she looked at my hands, hadn't got them painted, she laughed, she said, oh, are they just a Saturday morning thing? But I just hadn't got around to doing them that day. So red nails, love my red lips. I wear makeup and again, I've got a friend who says, oh, do you wear that to um, impress other people? And it's like, no, it's what makes me feel good. I think I look blooming rough without my makeup because I've got really dark eyes. Um, so I like the lift that makeup gives me and then I feel good. So makeup counts as an accessory. The hairstyle and then the rings. I've got these rings here. They're not um, wedding rings, even though I live with somebody. They're I've bought that diamond ring for myself um, and that ring is my daughter's chose it for me so that symbolizes the three of us so they're my rings because after being married for a lot of years I had a big dent on my finger and it felt really light so I have rings, rings on that hand and I always love my different colourful rings on here to accessorise with an outfit. Always put a different brooch on. I've got um, plastic ones and metal ones and felt ones I've made. Um, so I always love those. And it's about bringing all the colours together. I like different belts. Um, I really love the shoes that work well and um, thinking about different bags that I'd have with an outfit. I like scarves that you can play around with. I don't personally do hats because I just look an absolute idiot in them. I will wear a hat occasionally, but yeah. I think they're beautiful. There's so many amazing vintage store hats, but they're, they're just not for me, I don't think. Um, <clears throat> and you know, you can put flowers in your hair, but I always think that was a bit daft on short hair. So that's personal taste. So <clears throat> the 
there's so many accessories that you can have fun with really to um, lift oh and I'm thinking bangles as well used to wear a lot of bangles and I've still got them all but lately I found the last year or so they just irritate me or clattering together while I sew and everything so I don't tend to put them on and I never wear necklaces I have got a couple of beautiful pieces, a 40s crystal one and an, an art deco one that my mum bought me years ago, I think for my 21st. So I keep them to one side, but I just don't like me and necklaces. It sort of draws more attention to my very long neck. It just lengthens the whole thing out. So accessories are something you can have fun with, um, collect. They're a, <coughs> they're a more cost effective other than the shoes way of brightening a wardrobe you know look to the women of the past you know in the 40s that's how they brighten up an outfit you know they wouldn't have had that many clothes so you could change it up by adding on a different belt different gloves different brooch different shoes you know you could change the whole look of that outfit especially if you had separate you know mixing and matching them all which um I should have touched on, shouldn't I, in my other thing about, you know, the mixing and matching nature of building this wardrobe. Maybe that will be for another day, thinking about all the capsule pieces. Now, finally, when we've gone through all of these steps and we've um, thought about what flatters us, what we like, what we want to wear, you know, which era or eras are we going to go for? Um, then you'd start to think about what your signature look might be. And you'll find as time goes on, unconsciously you'll be creating a signature look. Um, so, you know, I didn't sort of sit down and think, this is how I will create what will be my signature look. And it sounds quite arrogant to say, oh, this is my signature look. But I, I know what it is, what people recognise me through, because they tell me. So students will comment on my red lipstick, how I like it, my bright colours, um, my jewellery, my glasses. Um, yeah, so I think I'm very much known more for the fitted dresses, the red lips, the, the fun prints, the florals um, and my um, brooches. So you, you will start to develop what is your signature look um, and the colours that you that work for you. And then it starts making, creating and adding to this wardrobe far more easy because you know which shape trousers, if they're fitted trousers, wide leg trousers, maybe both. Um, which type of tops, blouses, um, do you like layering? Um, is it dresses and cardigans you're more drawn to? You know, I have some friends that only wear dresses, um, others that only wear trousers. You know, it's about knowing your signature look. I think my final comment, just one last parting comment I'll have to uh, put on here, is about the rules again. Just wear what you want to wear. A long time ago, maybe two years, I've just lost all concept of time of late. A lovely lady posted on Instagram about how she had had her photo in her 50s floral dress lifted and put in a magazine as an example of what women over 50 shouldn't wear. And I flagged it up to a so over 50 who then did this big campaign. And, you know, and it's, you know, wear whatever you want, basically, because they said women over 50 shouldn't wear florals amongst all these other rules of things that you shouldn't wear. So for no, I am 53. Um, I remember what my mum was wearing in her 50s and it's totally different to what she wears and she's going to be 80 next month. She now wears silver converse and she's got her ear pierced up here like me and she just wears whatever she wants. But she dressed more in the 80s how women in the 50s were supposed to dress and it's quite grumpy to be honest. There's less rules now because it's about dress for you. You know, so I've seen women that are a much bigger dress size than me wearing cropped um, tops you know and showing their bare stomachs and they're really enjoying it so that is how they should be dressing I feel self-conscious doing that because that's how I don't want to dress so it's all about choice it's not down to the rules of what people say you should and shouldn't be wearing wear what you want to wear have fun and enjoy it so, you know, if you don't like sewing your knees off, then wear a longer skirt. If you like showing your legs off, wear a shorter skirt. Yeah, go.
go for it and have fun. I'm six foot, I'm 53, and I'm probably enjoying my clothes far more than I ever did in my whole life, even though I've adored fashion all my life. You become more and more empowered as you get older, I believe. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed this. Whatever your age, whoever you are, if you want to dress vintage, vintage inspired, just dip your toe in. I really hope that you've found something of use in this video. So I'd love to know what you think. It'd be really interesting to have some feedback on this and um, yeah, have a little bit of a chat with you. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss my videos. Um, it'd be lovely to have you here again another week. So I shall say that's all for now, folks. I'm Lisa, thanks for joining me today, checking out and see you next time. Bye bye.